Hi again, here's a few instance generator tips on how you could go about connecting separate objects together using the instance generator. This is part one and it's all native to Lightwave so you won't need any additional plugins. I've also set up a Gumroad account which you'll find in the link below where you can download the same files. Let's start with a simple one. The one thing that all of these examples will have in common is that they are all exactly one meter in depth. So the start of the origin and they'll be one meter deep, exactly as in this square tube here. Here it is in layout. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new null and we're gonna call it target. Give it a shape if we like, and then we're gonna move it, move it out here. The next thing to do is we're gonna select our tube. We're gonna turn it off from the viewport and the renderer. Over in the items tab, down here in the clone, clone instance. B for properties and you'll see that that has conveniently added an instance generator pointing to that tube for us. Open that up and here we'll give it a color we can see. Let's go for the green. We'll also set it so we can see it. There we go. Now the first thing we're gonna do is target our target. And we're gonna do that really easily by coming over to the rotation tab and where it says mode, target item, and where it says target item, we're gonna select our target null. So that does exactly what we'd expect it to do. Next, we're gonna deal with the stretching. So we start here and we end up at our destination target here. So let's jump over to the stretch tab and we're gonna change the mode to uniform. Now I think it's worth noting here is that this is at 100% and we're at 0% here. So the less we go, the shorter it gets. So minus 100 is effectively no scale. Now bear that in mind for later. So we'll set it to zero and zero, zero, zero. Now it's time for some really simple nodes. So we go over to the node tab and we will use nodes. Here we are all ready to go. So the first thing we need is our target null. So let's get an item info and we'll pick our target null. Okay, next we want a distance null. Okay, and we're gonna go from here and we're gonna go to here the base position of our instance and the position of their target. And then we're also gonna get a make vector. And we're gonna plug the result into the stretch. But you'll see we've overshot. So remember earlier where the minus 100 was zero and zero was one, well we wanna kind of remap those values. So let's get a remap node. We're gonna keep the minimum and maximum the same, but the new minimum is minus one, which is minus 100, and the new max is zero. So that's good. In fact, that's all we need for that for now. And what you'll see is that instance is now nicely stretching and targeting that null. Now the nice thing about this setup is I can quickly build up a network. So I have quick clone mapped to option D in my case. So with my instance selected, quick clone, I can move these nulls wherever they need to be. And they will all consistently point to this target null. Let's just duplicate the null and move it out here. Now we could just copy and paste the generator from one of the other nulls uh, just to speed up time. Let's do that actually. So let's select any of these nulls, copy, select the target, and paste. So it's still referencing the one meter tube, but we want to target our second target item here. So we just go to rotation target. Let's select that second target. Now it's not doing anything because the only downside to this is you've got to remember to actually go into the nulls and retarget this way. I don't think there's any way of accessing this outside of the node editor. So if somebody knows, please drop a note in the comment. So this is all nice and editable and you can move these wherever they need to go. Let's just remove these four instances here. Okay, so this is our original null. Now it's worth remembering, because this is an instance generator, we've got access to all these different types as well. So quite easily, instead of just using the pivot point, we could, if necessary, use like a radial array. And you've got all, all those options to play with as well. Obviously polygons, points, particles, and surfaces on other objects you could all use to get some interesting results.
Now you could change offsets and add a bit of randomization. You've got to be aware that it does change it at both ends. And another thing to note as well, while we're here, let's go to the stretching. Let's get a scalar and plug that into the X and Y. And then we have control over the width of our tube in this case. So we get a nice thin tube. Let's unhook those. Um, what you could also do is you could flip to world coordinates, select the source box, and do it at source. Second example, we're gonna make a two point poly chain. Start off with the box tool. And again, we're gonna make it one meter deep. And we're gonna give it a load of segments. Okay, so let's delete that end and F3, rest on ground. So here we have a two point polychain. So it starts at the origin at zero, zero, zero and ends at one meter deep. We're in layout, here's our two point polychain and we're gonna add a little displacement to it. Let's turn this to a front facing wireframe so we can see it and press the equals key to add a bone. I'm gonna move it halfway down the chain. P for properties, I'm gonna change it from a Z axis to a joint and turn off the multiply strength option here and press R to rest. So a little displacement there, but obviously it's doing on the whole chain there. I just wanna affect the bit in the middle. So I'm gonna hit limited range and I'm just gonna put in 0.5 there. So now we have a very simple displacement on that two point poly chain. Let's zero that out for the moment and we'll address that later. Shut down the properties and we'll also turn it off from the viewport. In fact, we're gonna instance this, so we're also gonna turn it off here. For this example, we're gonna pretend we have two walls and we're gonna connect them up with cables at various points. So as in the previous example, two point poly chain selected. Over to the items tab, clone instance. Let's create a few target points. So this will be our opposing walls and we're gonna have this side of the wall connected to three points over this side. So let's just duplicate that. I mean, again, I'm using quick clone. Select our null with the instance generator on it. P for properties and bring up the instance generator. For this, we're just gonna use a simple rectangular array. And we'll just have a straight line of them along here. That's pretty straightforward. We have three targets to point at. And what we'll do is we'll set up one and then copy and paste it. Let's begin by pointing it to the first target. So as before, we'll go over to stretch and we'll change the mode to uniform because that'll save us having to do it later. And then we'll go over to the rotation tab, mode, target item, target item, target one. Okay, we'll need to address that stretching and what we're gonna do is replicate the exact process as we did in the first example. That's done and all nicely pointing to target one. Before we begin copy and pasting, I wanna get as much of the nodes sorted out as possible. And I wanna bring in that little displacement. Let's just move this all out of the way. Bring this joint down a little bit. And let's change the view so we can see what's going on. So we'll move this bone down just for a little displacement, but you'll see it's all very uniform. Nodes to the rescue. Let's get a random scalar node. And we'll get an add as well. We'll take the ID index into the add node and then the result into the seed. And then the out into the Y. And that's straight away giving us some nice randomness. So if we don't like that, we can change this add value here to change the seed. There we go. And also, of course, we've got the values to change. So if there's too much, we just back it off. And that, of course, works in tandem with what's going on with the bone position here. 
Bringing the instance generator back, all that remains now is to copy and paste. I'm not sure why this defaulted to parent. Normally I go for local or world, but I don't think it makes any difference in this case. Anyway, add object. We're gonna add another instance of the two point polychain. And then we're gonna add another one. So we've got three instances of the same object, basically. We could change the color of each just to see what's going on. I don't know why that got ticked, but there we go. I'll untick that, don't need it. The green is the original. Let's go to edit, copy settings, select these two and paste settings. But you'll notice, of course, they're all pointing to target one and we wanna vary that up. Select the second item, rotation, point that target two, go to the nodes and point that to target two as well. And we'll do a similar thing here for this last item, over to rotation, target to target three, use nodes, target three. So now we have our NAT cables nicely connected to our targets. Final step, let's thicken them up and texture. Jump over to VPR and as you can see, they are very thin. In fact, what I might do is go to the environment light and turn it off from the camera. Excellent, okay, so we need to select our original instanced one meter polychain. Press P on the keyboard. Over here in the primitives, go to edges and our particle line thickness. We need a negative number to give it some physical dimension. We'll start with 0 0.01. And for this scale, it's very chunky. 0 0.02 is good for this. Now let's click on edit nodes. We're gonna be using the lines tapering. I need an instance info. Again, we'll go for a random scalar. We might as well use that add as well. So as before, ID index into the add, result into the seed, and the output into the lines taper. This value zero to one is basically zero to 100% of whatever value this is here. So that's pretty easy to understand. So let's make the smallest value a little bit bigger. There we go. Perhaps include that maximum and minimum. And we can use this add, just chuck in any old number in here, to change the seed to taste. Finally, let's do the texturing, which is a very similar approach. Into the nodes. Let's get that instance info node. So instance info. And let's get a gradient. And just to be different, we use the fixed random here because that's from zero to one. So if we go onto the input here and the output, they're all black currently. Just add a key at the end, pick a color. There you go, whatever makes you happy. You're stuck with a fixed random here, you can't really change it. We could do the same random trick we did earlier though. And this is all contained in one instance generator. So if you don't like that rectangular array, when you want to add more to it, as I showed earlier, that's easy enough to do. Part two up next, where I'll be showing you how you can point instances at other instances and hopefully a few more other goodies as well. So stay tuned for that.